Hey, Jamie. I've been looking for you for now on two hours. Where the deuce have you been, anyhow? Riding. Jamie, look. You left here without doing all your chores. The, the wood box was half empty. The, the chickens hadn't been fed. And I'm saying, piping mad at you. Now, look, Jamie, we don't mind you riding off and doing whatever's on your mind, but we'd just like to know where you're at. Don't you understand that? I get them done. Yeah, but not on time. Look, I get them done my way. Does it have to be yours? Jamie. Jamie. You can talk to me. What, what's the matter, son? What's on your mind? What's wrong? Ain't nothing wrong with me. What'd you do to your leg? Here, let me see. Ooh. We'll have to do something about that. You're pretty tame. How about us being friends? I could sure use a friend. Virginia City leads off there. Think you can make it all right? Made it here, didn't I? Just let me water my mule, clean off my face, and I'll be on my way. Thank you for your help. There's a pump. Some spread. That sure is. <laughs> Him at the bottom of a dry wash. Had himself a fall. He's bruised up some, nothing's broke. <laughs> He's got too much sass in him to hurt. Yeah, good rub down. Howdy. I'd say you're the boss around here. That uh, hand of yours need doctrine? Sprain, but I'm still in one piece. Wouldn't take it amiss if you used to tell me to rest a spell and have some grub. Well, uh, why don't you rest a spell and have some grub? Stay the night if you like, too. Enforce myself. Name's John. Honest John, but I answered other two. Ben Cartwright. If you got any one-handed work needs doing, I'll be glad to pay him away. No, no need for that. Figure you'd say that. I just want to make a good impression. What if I put my friend here in your corral there? So you make yourself at home. Obliged. Now you mind your manners. I want you to make a good impression, too. My, how some folks do live. Think we found what we're looking for? Hmm?
Lucifer. Well, I thought you was dead. Well, how'd you get yourself in there? You ain't got the sense to lower give a lizard. I thought that fox had you for sure. Got your leg, didn't he? Let me look at it here in the whole steel, you devil. Well, you had pretty good doctrine. Better than I have. You've been eating well, too. <laughs> oh, John, you're glad to see you. I'll be dang. Hey, mister, who told you to let that bird out of his cage? Didn't have to be told. Well, you just put him back. No, sir, he's my bird. <laughs> he's not your bird, he's my bird. Now give him to me. Give him to me. <laughs> now look what you did. You done it yourself with all your yelling and jumping around. <laughs> Well, you let him out of his cage. You had no right to just walk into somebody's barn and get his cage and open now, it. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jamie. Hold it. We'll get him back. Let's see what's what. I'll tell you what's what. That bird was scared away from me two days ago by a fox. That's how he got his leg hurt. I don't believe that. Anybody could come here and say that that bird's his. Can you prove that, mister? If you can, try calling him. See who he comes to. Well, that sounds fair enough. Jamie? Good. Yeah, you get the first crack. If you come to him, the bird belongs to Jamie, huh? Come on, Blackie. Come on, Blackie. Come on. Cookies, Blackie, cookies. Come on, Blackie. Come on. Please, Blackie, come on. Come on. Well, it ain't fair. I mean, I haven't had time to teach him that yet. Don't need no teaching. Lucifer, black devil, you come on down here before I pull your hair out. A store in the bird. I'd, uh, I'd pay dang near any price for him. I put store in him too. He ain't for sale. Now I've been invited to stay for supper and a night. All right, if I store my gear in there. Yeah, you're welcome to the bunkhouse if you want. Uh, I couldn't sleep at all this morning. Well, do what you like, but supper will be ready in a minute. And if you change your mind, I still pay any price for that bird. Ain't likely. Well, Lucifer, we've been dealt pretty good hand. Now we figured out how to play it, huh? Yes, sir. I was around the horn twice before I was 20. Coffee? More coffee? Yes, sir. I busted my nose in Singapore, my ribs in Port Said, and my left leg in Nome. When were you in Singapore? I was there several times. Oh, were you? Yeah, second mate on the Lightning. What was your ship? I I busted my right leg falling out of bed in my own house. <laughs> uh, speaking of bed, uh, I think I'm going to go up and get me a little sack time. I'll see you fellas tomorrow. Good night, gentlemen. Me too. i got to get a pretty early. I was running down in Kansas at the time. Texas fever wiped me out. First time I took to Roman. Wolfen. Now, the, no, the third time is when I had that medicine show. Honest John's Elixir. Good for anything that ails you. Now I'm bound to hunting and borrowing. Well, how about a touch of this medicine for what ails you? Never said no in my life, but thank you kindly. Yeah. Long time since I had anything that good in my gullet. Oh, it's mighty soothing, sir. You set a fine table, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. Can I please be excused? Yes, Jamie. Oh, Jamie. Uh, don't stay up too late now. Bedtime. All right. Fine boy. Your grandson? No. No, he's been living with us since his father died. Mm. Mm. Neighbors to you? No, his father was a traveling man, a rainmaker. He wasn't. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Boy's been fretting about that crow. I'll look to it. Eye full of stars make a man feel alone. You ain't kin to them, are you? You sure don't look like them. And you know I mean, like the way they act with you, kind of careful, like. Now, kin folks, they don't care if they hurt your feelings or rile you or grieve you or what they do. They like they had a right to it. Your uh, folks die recent. My father. Uh, what was his name? Tom Hunter. Hmm. You know, I ran across a Tom Hunter five, six years ago. He was a rainmaker. Your father have red hair like you and a spiel to bring tears to a grease brush? Yes. Well, that <laughs> don't be <laughs> So that was your pa. He was a fine man. Did you know him long? Well, I just ran into him that once. It was, uh, we were, his, I... Ugh, memory's got holes in it. He's gone, huh? You sure favor him, you know that? <sighs> Sorry about Lucifer, boy. Him and me been roaming around together nearly three years. He had a busted wing when I found him. I nursed him. I guess he thinks I'm his mama. It just, a hand of mine grieves me a lot more than I like to let on. I sure ought to rest it. <laughs> yeah, you think you could fix it up with him for me to stay here till my hand gets better? Take more than a few days, three or four at the most. You do that for me, and I'll give you Lucifer for your very own. You mean that? I said it, boy. Don't doubt it. Oh, I won't. I'll talk to Mr. Cartwright. First thing in the morning. Now give him a kiss, Lucifer. <laughs> Tell him to come directly to me. Well, I guess he thought he'd be more likely to say yes if I asked for him. And you want him to stay, so the crow will be here. Well, kind of, but he said he'd give me the crow if he got to stay. You like him, don't you? Yes, sir. He's a conniving old rascal, but I like him, too. All right. Go on, tell him he can stay. Although, if I know honest John, he's already heard it. John! I heard, I heard. Now... First thing you gotta do is fix this your place up. If I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna have me some comforts. You got a bed around here? Uh, yeah, there's one up in the attic. We'll patch you down. And I gotta figure me a way to hang some blankets around there. This place was all drafts last night. Could use me a chair, lamp, or a lantern. You can scrounge them up. Oh, sure. Hello, Lucifer. Is he mine now? Well, you've done what you said you would, so I... Only I think, as long as I'm around here, you might as well stay out here with me. It'd be kind of messy in the house. Oh, sure. Did you really know my father? Said I did, didn't I? Come on, I want to show you some of Lucifer's tricks. Money, Lucifer. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Come on, Mr. Hardy Darn. I'll show you another one here. Let me get my cards out of here. Jamie. Hop Singh was looking for you. I was just showing him some of those for his Now you watch this one. These here's fortune cards. I stole them from a gypsy. She had a parrot done for me. I taught Lucifer how. All right, Lucifer, take a card. Take a card. Give it to Jamie. Go on, give it to him. Give it to him. <laughs> now read it. Go on, read it. Read it? Yeah. A stranger will change your life. Hey, by golly, how about that? A stranger will change your life. <laughs> Ain't he great? That's the smartest buddy ever saw. <laughs> Well, I'd better be going. Thanks, John. Yeah. You, uh, you gave him Lucifer, huh? Mm hmm. Well, I thank you for him. No, I don't mention it. Reckon I'm obliged to you, too. You got any chore and you want done around here, you let me know. I may be a conniving rapscallion, but I give for what I take. The word was rascal. Just so as we understand each other. As I was hoping for that, John. You know, uh, the boy seems to be unhappy about something. Yeah, I could see. He's taken to you. That could be good for him. It could be bad. You put me on notice? Just so as we understand each other. Well, all you need now is a God bless our happy home sign hung up someplace. I got one to make in my embroidery hoop. Stretch that out tight, boy. I don't want my drafts and I like my privacy. <sighs> Jamie, I'd like to talk to you for a minute if I could. I reckon I can fetch that mattress myself. How long's he gonna stay here now? Just till his hand gets better. Your pa said he could. I missed y'all riding today. Oh, well, I was busy. Yeah. How about tomorrow? I don't know, maybe. I'll, uh, I'll see you, Jamie. It's all right. My pa did it, too. And you know how it is. Sure. Where did you meet him, John? Hey, your pa? Uh, well, it's, it's kind of... kind of just remember, uh... Did you ever in Nebraska? Nebraska? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's where it was. Nebraska. Uh, right outside, uh, Omaha. You're right outside of Omaha, Nebraska. I was camped for the night, and your pa come along, he seen my outfit, and uh, told me he planned on hitting town the next day. Didn't make sense for a medicine show and a rainmaker to hit town the same day, so we played cars to see who go in first. Yeah, you was asleep in the back of the wagon. Who won? Yeah, your pa. Only time I ever laid eyes on him. I'll tell you, I remember it like it was yesterday. Sometimes I can't remember what he looks like. Oh, well, that's natural, boy. That's natural. Hey, John. Um, 
Do you feel like riding out with me tomorrow, seeing something? All right. All right. Good. <laughs> Was it all right? Yeah, that's going to be... Get that thing back up. Here it is. How'd you ever find this place? Just riding. These were my father's. Here's his pocket watch. Here's his picture. That's my mother with him. It's their wedding picture. Why do you keep these things out here? Oh, well, no special reason. Mm -hmm. House belongs to Cartwrights. That's your place is yours, huh? Don't you like the Cartwrights? Yeah, I like them a lot. I mean, they're real good to me. Give me everything I ever want or need. You know, the only thing I ever got without their doing was Lucifer. And then Haas had to help me with the cage. Sometimes a man's kind to you. It's a sight harder to take than if he's downright mean. No, it's not that. It's living with them. I do things the way they do, think the way they think. Sometimes I even wake up at nights thinking that they're my family. I never had any other. The point is, they're not my family. And I'm scared that I'm forgetting everything about my pa and the way we live. Sure, boy. There ain't a man alive who wouldn't like to live his own life. Now, you take me. Living under a roof, people around me all the time. Now, that ain't for me. I'm gonna do it because I'm getting old. I can't care for myself proper. And, uh, see me dying off in the middle of nowhere. Nobody around to give a hoot. It's an awful way to go, boy. It's the worst. So I'm living civilized. Got my company manners on, it's a strain, I'll tell you. <laughs> What happened to your wagon, John? Oh, mm. well, I had me a little too much to drink one night. Time I come around, the sheriff had sold it off and the team, too, to pay for the damages. And I just ain't been able to get enough together since then to buy another. Come here. Where are you going? I want to show you something. Hey, it looks like the tide went out. Wasn't this full this morning? Almost. Yeah, old John, huh? Eh? Well, you can't accuse a man without evidence. Well, John arrives, the brandy vanishes. I'd say that was evidence enough. What do you suggest? Well, I suggest you tell him to lay off the brandy or go down the road. Well. What do you mean, well? You've put hired hands on that kind of notice before. He's not a hired hand. You're darn right, he ain't. He's a dang conniving old thief that's done cornswoggled himself a free bed and a free meal, and he's a troublemaker, too. Got Hop Singh all riled up in half the hands. He, he won't let him in the tack room. He tells him it's his private property. Yeah, but he's been able to get through to the boy, which we haven't been able to do for some time. Yeah? Well, I don't know whether that's good or bad. Well, he's been good for the boy so far. Let's see what happens. You dragged me out here to see this? It isn't busted up so bad we couldn't fix it. Used to be a homesteader, but he moved out. Don't you think we could fix it? What for? So as we can use it. I mean, we could do it right out here and nobody would have to know about it. We could go off in it together. The way you used to. The way I did with my pa. I ain't your father, boy. No. You got no call on me, and I got none on you. That's right. And you got no right to put something like that to me. You get me in trouble all around. I go off with you like as not I'd spend the rest of my days in jail. Sorry I said anything. Well, I don't know why you did, boy. You and me, we got needs. 
eating regular and sleeping warm, I don't answer them. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I ain't gonna do nothing until my hand feels better. I ain't promising you nothing. John, you in there? Well, I got my chores done. Let's go. Go where, boy? To the wagon. You said we'd work on it today. And I found some old spokes that I got stored behind the barn that we can fix the wheel with. And I found some old... Oh! Oh, I ain't feeling right. Oh, I got something ailing me. Tomorrow, I promise you. All right. Um, can I get you anything? No, I don't need nothing. Just leave me be. Mr. Cartwright, I meant to tell you about that. You see, Mr. Cartwright? Mr. Cartwright? Mr. Cartwright, really? He didn't do it. I, I spilled it. Don't lie, Jamie. That's right, Jamie. Don't lie. If you're talking about the brandy, Mr. Cartwright, it was me that spilled it. All over me. I'll talk to you later when you're sober. Well, don't just look at me, boy. I feel poorly. Tell me. Now, why did you do it, John? Why? Well, I got thinking about you. What'd be the right thing to do? And got me such a thirst, I just couldn't help it. That's no reason. Only reason I got. Think they throw me out for a thing like that? I don't know. They wouldn't throw a man out for just one little drink. <sighs> that wasn't just one little drink. Then square it for me with them, Jamie. Listen to me. There may be this and that we don't like about it, but you and me, we got a good thing going here. We'd be fools if we got ourselves shut out. You mean we're not going to do anything about the wagon? I'm trying to get you to see it my way, boy. We're not going anywhere? I didn't say that. I just... I can't even think. I feel so poorly. Mr. Carver. What is it, Jamie? I want to pay for the brandy he took. How do you propose to do that? Well, I figured next time you went into town for supplies, I could go with you and maybe chore at the livery stable until it was paid off. Don't you think that's John's responsibility? I want to pay for it. Oh, Jamie. I'm proud of you for standing up for a friend and for wanting to take on his responsibility, but... Jamie, don't read more into a man than common sense tells you is there. Will you let me pay for it? Did you understand what I said? Yes, sir. All right.
Come sneaking in on me, scare me half to death. I was just looking for something from my stomach. You get out of my kitchen! You don't give me no orders. Mr. Cartwright, you tell him stay out of my kitchen. Huh? I guess you're gonna send me down the road. You'd have been down that road a long time ago if it hadn't been for Jamie. Well, you think I don't know that? Remember, you put me on notice right at the start. Except I know something you don't. Wasn't for me, you could have lost him. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, he's got this notion. He wants me to help him fix up a wagon he found. Go out with him on the road, like his daddy used to. If I talked him out of it. Why? Because it suited your purpose? You've been using that boy, playing on him ever since you got here. Do you have any feelings for him at all? Of course I do. That's why I'm here. I just wanted something to nail myself together so I could brace up and make an appearance for him. Oh, of course. You weren't looking for an excuse for a drink, were you? You're right. I was. I'm a liar, Mr. Cartwright. That's a sorry fact. I'm a liar. But when you're broke, sick, and old, everybody just turns their back on you. You go hungry and you sleep in ditches. Guess so even just a dry corner to lay in is something to dream about. Sure hope you won't throw me out. You certainly haven't acted like somebody who wanted to stay. A moment ago, just say so. No. I'll tell you when. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Why'd you have to do it for? Don't you be at me, boy. I had enough, John. Until you ask too much. Expect everybody to act just like you are. Do everything you think's right. A person can't even act like a human being around neither one of you. Can't even take one little drink, even if his insides is burning up. Ah! Don't play with the bird, boy. He don't like it. Yes, he does. I said he don't like it. Come here, Lucifer. Come on. Come on over here, Dad. That a baby. He's my bird, John. He ain't. He is so. You gave him to me because I got it fixed up so he could stay here. Well, I ain't staying, so I'm taking him back. I don't care what you do. No. Well, the payroll's almost finished. Off to bed, Jamie? Yes. Uh, Jamie. Come on over here. Jamie, let me tell you about uh, older people. Come on, you cup, boy. You don't want. No, thank you. Now, sometimes they do foolish things. In fact, sometimes they act more like children than children do without realizing the consequences. And John is old. He's had a very hard life. You know, in some ways, you're more grown up than he is. Hey, how about some milk and cookies, huh? All right. Lucifer! 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 
Sir. I don't see him. Hey, what happened in here? Oh, that bird flew off with a $20 bill. Where? How do I know where? Where's it at? Where's what? You know what, the money. Where is it? Did he bring it to you? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Look, John, give me the money and I'll tell him you didn't have anything to do with it, please. Lucifer took some of my money, John. Did you happen to see where he put it? I don't know nothing about no money. Well, uh, he probably dropped it outside somewhere. We'll look for it in the morning. If we find it, of course, we won't have to search for it. See you then. Well, don't look at me like that, boy. I ain't done anything. Why don't you just go? John turning out like he did. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And I guess Jamie felt that with Johnny. It was like having his father back, because his father was a traveling man. Yeah. Paul. With that much money on him, he'd head straight for town, wouldn't he? What'll you do if you find him? Well, I'll talk to him. Try to talk him into coming back. If I can't do that, I'll at least try to get him to give the crow back to Jamie. Some, anything. Good luck. Hey, John. John? Hey, John. You don't think more than that? Wake him up. Hey, he ain't just drunk. He's sick. He's well, burning up. He wasn't when I found him. I better get a doctor. Yeah, just bring him on up to Ponderosa. I'm going to take him out there. All right. Stay still back there, John. You're a pretty sick fella. Where are you taking me, Hosh? To the Ponderosa. You're gonna need some nurse maiden, and the doc says he can't do it by himself. He says you got more booze in your veins than you have blood, and we're gonna ring you out. I ain't going. You ain't got much choice in the matter. A tomcat could push you over. I sold Jamie's crow. Yep. We're going to have to tell him. I lied to him. I told him I knew his pa, and I ain't never even seen him. Uh-huh. I took that money. Yep, you're a pretty disreputable fella, ain't you? Ain't worth the hold of bear, man. I reckon Jamie's pretty sore. Well, he's sort of cut up at that. Ain't going to be easy to face him, Hoss. Sold your crow, boy. Why'd you bring him back? Jamie, he's a sick man. I don't care if he dies. Hey, Jamie. It's about time you faced up with some facts, boy. He's the same man he always was. It was you that tried to make him something he wasn't. Now, you can't blame him for, for not being able to live up to it. He's a liar and a thief. He's also a sick man. He's near dead. Well, then why didn't you just leave him where you found him?
sorry. I didn't mean what I said. John? 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 He went to sleep, Jamie. It was real easy. No. He said that was the worst way to die. How do you mean? Alone. Nobody around to give a hoot about it. That's what he was afraid of. And that's why he came here. That's the way he died. Thinking nobody gave a hoot. I don't think so. Read that. He must have wrote it there at the end like a will and testament. I bequeath to my friend, Jamie Hunter, all of my earthly possessions, which ain't much. Including my crow. But I don't understand. I mean, this doesn't mean anything. He didn't have anything. Oh, of course it means something, boy. Don't you see? It means that along toward the end there that, that his mind must have slipped back to the time when he had the crow. And when you and him was friends and, and you cared about him and he knew it. Don't you see? That's, that's all that counts, Jamie, is when he died, he... He felt like somebody cared about him, that you was his friend. Don't you see? Looking at young fella. Oh, I, I was just admiring that bird. Lion rustler. A what? Lion rustler. Steal the food right off your plate. I always thought it was called a blue jay. Yeah, that's right. Want to use the other name? Oh.
maybe. No reason. I can see that now. Thought that horse got away on you there. Didn't know you were just uh, shaking the mean out of him. Yeah. He likes to run. I like to let him. Seems I misplaced Virginia City. Can you tell me how to get there? Oh, sure. Well, that's where I'm going. You're welcome to come along with me if you like. I'm obliged. Thank you. Sure. Right this way. never seen one like this. Oh, well, I've seen a lot of them. Go on, take a look at it. All right. Look yonder. Shoot, I'm standing here. That's Pepper Shannon. Balance. That's what makes the difference. Point it at me, you'll see. Well, I can't. You're never supposed to point a gun at anything you don't intend to shoot. Well, most of the times, that's true. You're going to be doing us both a favor if you point it at me right now. Go on, do it, boy. Point it. That's a wanted man with a price on his head of two thousand dollars, and it's all going to be mine. Montana, you're a little late. The boy's already taken me prisoner, taking me to the sheriff right now. Keep aiming at me. That's the way. Finger there, young fella. I'm going peaceful. Pepper Shannon? Pepper Shannon? The stage robber? The famous outlaw? You got the name right. And you're the first man that's ever captured old Pepper Shannon. Sing big apple pie today. He should be here now. Hmm. You know, he does like hop sings apple pie over well. You don't reckon you'd be lost or something, do you? You'll never guess what happened. Young man, you've been told that we have supper at the same time every day. Yes, sir. Uh, I got the mail. Thank you. Did you get them buckles over to hardware? I guess I forgot. Well, the sheriff wanted to talk to me, and, and then I had to hurry to get home. He wanted me to write it all down, how I captured Pepper Shannon. How you... Captured Pepper Shannon. Pepper Shannon the outlaw? Yeah. <laughs> And Montana Jones says that there's a reward out for him. Two thousand dollars. Jamie, you come in kitchen. Your supper in oven. Well, Hop Singh, I wanted to tell him how I... Uh, Hop Singh would like to clean up after supper. He's been waiting around for two hours. Why don't you go in and eat and then we'll talk. Yes, sir. <clears throat> he, he, he was real nice. He, he looked a lot older than pictures in his book, though. Who's older? Well, Pepper Shannon. some whoppers, but that about takes a cake. You gotta admit, it's a pretty good excuse for me late for supper. I remember a couple of fellas came up with some pretty good whoppers of their own at one time. Well, I think I better have a talk with that young fella. Pepper's a famous outlaw, the most famous that ever lived. Jamie, no talk with Mao Fu. It's not polite. My mouth's not full, Hop Singh. Should be. Or your food get cold. 
He must have robbed at least 100 stages. I read about him in a book I got upstairs. Hey, Jamie. Those, uh, those dime novels that you've got, you know, I've been meaning to talk to you about those. Yes? You know, they're not always uh, accurate. And they, uh, they sure tend to stretch the imagination somewhat. Well, all right, all right. Tell me, how did it happen? How did you capture it? Well, I captured him. Well, I was riding into town, and when I met this man, and he said that he was lost and that, that he didn't know how to get to Virginia City, so I offered to take him. Mr. Mills is here to see you. Attorney at law. What a man. All right. Staying out when you're ready to go, Mr. Nelson. I don't remember asking for no lawyer. You didn't. I was retained to act in your behalf. You mind telling me who hired you? A friend who wants to help. A friend? No name? You need a lawyer. I'm a good one. I think that's all that matters. Twelve years. You've been reading a book. You're about to ask me how long it's been since I robbed a stage in this state. That's my answer. Twelve years. In fact, I wasn't even in the country. You've been doing a little, uh, reading yourself. Statute of limitation expires in ten years. After that, the law can't touch you. Well, the hearing will just be a formality. You'll be a free man at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Sheriff? Coming. See you in court. Tell my friend no name, I'll be saying him. I still want to buy that uh, South Slope timber of yours. I'm prepared to sweeten my previous offer by about $4,500. Sorry, not for sale. Jamie. $4,700, but that's my last offer. Good. You know, they wrote five books about you. I got all of them. That's a powerful lot of words. I doubt anybody's worth that many. I don't. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I, I was just saying hello to Mr. Shannon. Ponderosa Ranch. Boy told me about you, riding into town. I got a feeling we met before. We have. Sand Pass. Oh, yeah. The stage. One of my mistakes. I've made a lot of them. Oh, I better get those harness buckles before I forget. Yeah, good idea. Bye-bye, Mr. Shannon. Nice boy. Yes, he is. I want some. He uh, hadn't rode into town with me. I could have got shot. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'll tell you something else you're thinking, too. An old stage robber like me, bad company for that boy. Certainly not the best. Well, the last thing in the world I'd want is cause that boy harm. Sorry about Sam, Pat. We both are. Yeah. Hi, Ben. Hey, Ben, you got a minute? Sure. I saw you talking to Pepper. You're about the only one that can get a word out of him. Other people have tried, but he just seems to look right through him and says nary a word. Well, I talked to you in jail, didn't I? Well, he talked to you, but he didn't say nothing. Look here on it, Ben. He's been sitting on that bench for three days now, all day long, just to sit. Nothing wrong with that. Did he say anything to you about it? Why he's here, what he's fixing to do, how long he's going to stay? No, not a word. A man with his record, no money, just to sitting in the sun. He's got to be planning something. I hate to say it, Roy, but I got the same feeling.
suggests start, doesn't it, Mr. Corey? How did you get in here? Back door. The back door was locked. It's always locked. It was. I didn't notice. Well, you better get out of here, because there's another man coming by here in a few minutes. You're a lawyer? Yeah. I... Wait a minute. You're the one who sent that note to my house. Darren, in your vest pocket. I can see the bulge. Don't touch it, Mr. Gorey. You're much too young to die. Sit down. Sit down. Last time I talked to you, you were clerking at a bank. You're a big man now. I'll give you $5,000. Half. That was a deal we made. $80,000 currency shipment. I held up the stage and I took the box and what did I find? Newspaper! And a posse on my tail. The biggest posse this state ever saw. 7,500. Cash. All cash, Pepper. First, a drink. A drink? Sure. The good stuff. In the sideboard. I've been listening to people. You lend money. 10% interest. Well, let's see now. 80,000 that you never put in the box at 10% for 12 years. Why, you, uh, you more than doubled it, didn't you? Well, Pepper, it's, it's where I've made some money, you know, but uh, I've had bad luck, too, a lot of bad luck. You double the money, that doubles my share. I want 80,000 cash. <laughs> I haven't got it. I just haven't got it. Ten. Ten is about the most I could raise. You're getting brave. In a minute, you're going to tell me that uh, I can't tie you into that robbery. You can't. And even if I could... The statute of limitations has run out. That's in the state of Nevada. I make my own laws. Eighty thousand. You got two weeks. I'll tell you where and how I want it delivered. Second thought, you're not too young to die. Hey, you just gonna sit there? Huh? No, I'm helping you with the chores. Oh. Ah, uh, here, here it is. Pepper Shannon, like Robin Hood of yore, stole from the rich and gave to the poor. He had friends everywhere. His largesse was unending. Largesse means generosity. I I looked it up. Oh, I know what it meant. Yeah, uh, you better get that basket and gather them eggs, or I'm gonna tan your hide. Yes, sir. Robin Hood. Hi there, young fella. Hi, Pepper. Hey, Hoss. This is Pepper Shannon. Howdy. Looking for Ben Cartwright. Is he here? Yeah, he's in the house. I'll take you. No need. I can find him myself. Mr. 
understand. I was just fixing to have some coffee. Will you join me? I could use some. Thank you. I came to ask for a job. I see. If you're thinking I uh, picked you because of the boy, I didn't. I hit every ranch between here and town. No luck? Well, once they let me water my horse, that was the best. What I heard at the other places, I'm pretty sure you don't want me bugging with your crew. I ain't asking for that. What are you asking? Well, a place this big needs line riders. Hard work. Only work. Not too many men want to do it. Hard, I don't mind. Lonely, I like. I'll do a better job riding, building, fixing fences, and the best man you ever had. I'm looking for a stake. I need traveling money. And then you're not intending to stay around this area. No, yeah, I figured to. Till I sit in that bench in Virginia City. Gives a man no pleasure to be looked at like something the buzzards wouldn't touch. Walking out of that jail like I did there, that made some fools mad. The law forgives. They don't. Yeah. The statute of limitations was passed to help men who reformed. Maybe they doubt that you have. Ain't no maybe about it. They were waiting for me to rob a bank or the stage or something. Either that or uh, they figured I hadn't paid for what I did. Well, I paid all right. I paid. Ten years. Hard labor. All of it in solitary. Most of it chained against the wall. That's why I like it lonely. I'm used to it. Huh? Thanks for the coffee. I'm gonna mess it up, sir. We need a line man. Worst job on the ranch, but the only one that's open. I'll take it. The Beaver Meadow section, ten miles north of here. The line shack's in bad need of repair, and so are the fences. Miles of them. That's my traveling money. One restriction. You're still bad company for Jamie. If he shows up, I'll chase him back here. Fine. Beaver Meadow? Yeah. Who told you that? The bartender. The word's all over town. Is it? Why did it take you a whole week to find out? Yesterday was payday for the Ponderosa hands, and some of the men were in town last night. Riding fence, huh? Yeah. Is any of this uh, fence along the road between here and the Ponderosa? A lot of it. I want a man to ride along with you. I want a man who's prominent and honest a man whose word won't be doubted by anybody. It should be a minister or a judge or a, hey, a bank president. Harold Donovan. Well, there's no doubt about his prominence and honesty. He also happens to be president of the bank that owned the currency shipment Pepper Shannon stole. Which makes him perfect. I want that fence cut tonight at a spot where the brush is thick.
Ta. Oh. Mr. Donovan? I'm over now, nothing to worry about. He was trying to kill us. I don't like to hurt anybody, but I had to do it. You certainly did. You know, facing a gunman like that, that took courage. But I was armed, you weren't. Even so, that took real nerve. It's a terrible thing to have to kill a man. He's alive. Lie. Yes. That man needs help and fast. Well, uh, I could get a wagon at the Ponderosa. Oh, no, no. We haven't time for that. We'll manage in the buggy. He's a gunman and a thief, but still he's a human being. We can't just leave him here to bleed to death. Come on, now. Give me a hand. Badly hurt. Who shot him? Mr. Mills, and rightfully, too. He had ample cause. One. Let's get him into the house. I'll send him for a doctor. And the sheriff. Here, let me help. Now, if Shannon lives, he'll have to stand trial for attempted robbery and murder. Outlawing is rugged work. That man is wearing more scars than I ever saw in a human body. Now, these will help him sleep. One powder and a glass of water. I'll be back tomorrow to change the dressing. Huh? Now, looks like Pepper has a friend. Don't worry. He's doing fine. Bye, Doctor. Right. Mr. Carr, I... I know it's my bedtime, but... Well, I just couldn't help but wonder. Of course. He's gonna be all right. How is he, Doc? He'll be all right. Doctor, we're going to have to take your patient into town. Absolutely not. The man is seriously wounded. It'll be at least 72 hours before I'll even hazard a guess as to when he can be moved. Well, you tried to murder us. He belongs in jail. You try to move him, and you'll be the murderer. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Mr. Donovan, Mr. Mills, you can go now. Clem, my deputy, will ride into town with you. Well, not until I know who'll be responsible for Shannon's appearance in court. I'll be responsible. Oh, okay. You know what I don't understand? Why would Pepper Shannon fire at two men in the buggy? Well, he knows me, Mr. Cartwright. He stole funds from my bank. Oh, yes, the money was going to Carson City, I remember. So do I. It nearly destroyed my bank. Why, well, he saw me today. Must have seen the pouch. He guessed there was money in it. $16,000. It's Mr. Corey's last offer on your South Slope timber. That's why I'm wearing a gun to protect Mr. Corey's money. Well, why would he send cash? The look and feel of real money does a lot to persuade a reluctant man. Mr. Corey does a lot of business that way. Does he? Well, not with me. Well, I'll tell him that. Yes, do that. Good night. Pepper? Uh, Can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Cartwright? Mr. Cartwright? Here we are, Pepper. Uh.
I was on the ground. But who shot you? I, I don't. I don't know. I. I just was hit on the ground. Uh, 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 That's all. Uh, uh, didn't help us much. Well, maybe later. Don't count on it. When a man is seriously hurt, he's not apt to remember what happened. I'll let him rest. Go now. Check. Yeah. Them horses are sneaky. They come at you from any place. I sure do. They're knights, not horses. Knights, horses, what's the difference? I've been breaking my head for five days trying to learn to play this game, and I still keep losing. When Pepper gets to feeling better, we'll have to play up in his room. Yeah. Hey, Clem, you, you know Donovan. Huh? Have you ever known of him to ride off with somebody that's just checked a bunch of money out of his bank? No, but he probably had a reason. Yeah, whatever it is, I'd like to know what it was. Yeah, I would, too. I'm going to run into Virginia City tomorrow. I think I'll have a talk with him. Check. And unless I'm wrong, meet. Uh -uh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Them horses are a little sneaky, ain't they? <laughs> <laughs> Finally got me one, Ben. So Pepper fired first. What about it? Well, at least that's what Mills and Donovan say, right? You doubt their word? It's not that I doubt their word, just it doesn't make sense to me. Pepper fired first, he fired three times, and he missed both men. How do you explain that? It's a professional gunman. Sort of hard to believe, ain't it? I don't believe it. Well, maybe he had buck fever. I saw a man miss an elk, he could have clubbed with his rifle. Well, I saw Pepper kill a rattlesnake with one shot from his horse. And a man's a lot bigger than a rattlesnake. Yeah, I'd say a whole lot. Well, I better go up and have a look, see how Pepper's doing. Oh, you talked to Donovan? Yeah, sure did. He just repeated everything he said here. Pepper shot at them. I still don't think we have the truth. Well, I've known Harry for a long time. Never known him to lie. It's the one thing I can't get around. Pepper may be guilty, but there's sure a lot of questions that need answering. Like who cut the fence? And Pepper goes out to fix it, and the buggy just happens along, and Pepper just happens to get shot. Yeah. Sure makes you wonder, don't it? Hop sing wonder two. Food on table. Hop sing wonder when everybody sit down and eat. Right now. <sighs> Mr. Cartwright, you're all trying to help Pepper, and I didn't even think you even liked him. <laughs> It's not a question of liking or disliking. Every man's entitled to a fair shake. Hmm? I didn't wake you, did I? No. Sleep. Just pretending. Thought you was a deputy. Well, he's sitting at the bottom of the stairs reading the paper. Well, did you like the books? Ain't had much time for him. Sheriff was out here again. So was the doctor. Well, what'd the doctor say? Says I'm fine. You don't look it. No, maybe that's because I'm going to town tomorrow. To jail. And then to prison for 20, 30 years for something I didn't do. I never did say. Jamie? You think I, I tried to kill those two men? No, I never did believe it. Well, I didn't. And I can prove it. All I need is an hour or two in Virginia City and your help. You mean help you escape? All the way. I 
can't make it to Virginia City alone. I can't. I mean, what if the dead... You'd probably get killed. Jamie, if I told you nobody would get hurt, not even a scratch, would you do it then? To keep an innocent man from spending the rest of his life in prison? Yeah, I guess. But there's no way, Pepper. There's an easy way. Now, the deputy gets a midnight lunch, coffee and sandwiches. Now, if these powders was to get in a pot. I see. I can do that. Now you be in the barn with two horses here. I can do that too. Ain't nothing but a but a herd of bald faced lies. Ain't a word of truth in them. No surprise. They put outlawing about being president. Hmm. Stealing's fun. So is being chased by the law. Well, didn't you fight it that way? Well, a boy should be reading trash like this. Why do you let him? Well, I try to talk him out of it. Just make it more attractive to him. Jamie's grown up pretty fast. He knows now there's no truth in any of this. She won't be reading these books much longer. Good night. Good night. Good night, Clem. Good night, Brent. Thanks, kid. Mm-hmm. Another cup of coffee, Pepper? No, no, no thanks. Pop Singh always makes good coffee. said he wanted to talk to you. What would you want to talk about this time of night? I don't know, but it must be important. The middle of the night is scarcely the time to... Sit down, Don. The boy told me... When Ben Cartwright was there. Well, I expect he'll be by. He finds out me and the boy is missing. So you've escaped. Broken in here, obviously. Now you're using a boy to add to your list of crimes. No, sir, to prove he's innocent. Over in the corner, Jamie. I told you to sit down now, or I'll put a bullet in you. I don't know what you hope to gain by this, Shannon. watching the buggy come in. I didn't draw, and I didn't fire. The next thing I know, I'm eating dirt. Now, I know what you told the paper. I want to know why you lied. I didn't lie. Did you see me take a shot at you? Yes, I... No, I'm not sure that I did. But I heard it. Of that, I'm positive. How many shots? One shot, and then some others. You told the papers Mills shot me. Did you see that? No, not exactly. Well, what did you see? I'll tell you. I saw you standing beside the fence. And the buggy came up abreast of you. Mills was between us, so I, I didn't see you, but I heard you fire. And Mills was standing up, trying to hold the horse, pushing me out of the buggy, telling me to get down. And that's what you did, huh? Yes. It's true, I didn't see the rest of it, but 
I heard those shots. Do you still think I tried to kill you? Yes, I do. What have I told you? That I'm gonna pull this trigger. If you didn't change your mind. I'd still have to say you tried to kill us. Jamie. I think we found an honest man. Can you help him? He'll get a chance to try. Come on, Cleon. Breathe deep. Come on. I'm all right. Cleon, you're not all right. Come on, wake up. How's he doing? He's getting better. I'm all right. Sleeping powders are gone. They must have put him in the coffee. Yeah. It's a good thing I came down to get something to eat. Yeah, 3.30. We had a good long start. Yeah. Where do you reckon they went? Virginia City. Found that ask Donovan and Mills the same questions we've been asking ourselves. Horses are ready. Good, let's go. Come on, Clem. Breathe deep. Ben want to see me about it. He didn't say, Mr. Court. Did, um, did Pepper say anything about me? Uh, I don't know. Well, then what does Ben want to talk to me about? Uh, Pepper Shannon got away. He got, got away? Escaped? Yeah. Now, Mr. Cartwright, I don't know what... That pistol, he'll bring the law. You'll hang. Maybe. But you won't be around to see it done. Sit down. Here we are. All thieves together. Corey, if you could shoot as well as you can steal, I'd be a long time dead. No, Pepper, no, no, Pepper, I didn't. I, I didn't. Sure you did. Had to be you or either Mills, and I was watching Mills. You set it up, and I owe you for the bullets you put in me. I ought to put a bullet apiece in you. And I will, unless I get the money you stole from me. Corey, pay him. What about the boy? Never mind him. He's riding with me. Night's running out, Corey. Better talk up. You ain't got a lot of time. Fifteen thousand. I swear, that, that, that's every cent of cash I've got, Pepper. There ain't much for getting a shot, is it? You took eighty thousand, but I got charged for stealing. But I told you, I've had losses, big losses. So have I. Twelve years of losing. It's not enough. I want 20. That's only half of the share you promised me. Maybe, uh, uh, 18? 19. I swear, that's, that's all the cash I've got in the safe there. Go ahead, open it. Before I change my mind. Corey, 
Put down that gun. I don't think so. Don't come in, he'll kill you! Sit down over there. Move. I must admit, I'm a lot braver about those blood tests than I used to be. I, uh, I felt much stronger this week. I really have. It's worse, isn't it? It's worse. any chance that it might stop. I'd be lying if I told you I thought so. The white cells in your blood are increasing more rapidly than before. I'm sorry. I see. Well, I... I have things to do. I... I better be going. Doctor? A month. Two. At the most.
I'm fine, Scott. I just love you so much. I love you too. Now I have a surprise for you. Chocolate? No, another surprise. Do you remember how I used to promise that someday we'd go out west and we'd visit your grandmother and your grandfather? Yeah. Well, we're gonna do just that. Oh, good! Will we see cowboys and Indians and everything? Yes, we'll see cowboys and Indians and everything. Oh, Mom, when can we leave? Right away. Well, just as soon as we're packed. I'm so glad you're my mom. Come on, young man. We have a lot of things to do. Can I ride horses? You have to learn how. Oh, I'll learn. I'll be good at it. Thank you, Bill. How long does it take to get there? Not very long. you two bulls when you got your horns locked. But I need some more water to rinse the dishes. I'll be done in a minute, Mother. Now, you said that ten minutes ago, Zach. I need the water now. <laughs> What'd you say, man? What do you say? I asked you first. She needs the water. Did you write, Ben? A draw? Draw. Draw. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a lucky thing for you that, that Martha needed that water. Oh, lucky for me? You mean lucky for you? <laughs> I mean lucky for both of you. Another five minutes and you'd have to learn to write left-handed. <laughs> I'll go fetch the water. All right, my love. <laughs> But just the same, I think I could have beat you, Ben. Zach. All right. All right, my love. I'll be rubbing his arm with liniment half the night. <laughs> he's lucky he's got somebody to rub his arm. Hello, Mama. Oh, it hurts. I had to... Oh, why didn't you let me know you were coming? I could have met the stage and fixed a special supper. No, it's better this way. Mama. This is Scott. Scott, this is your grandmother. Oh, oh you're a fine-looking boy, Scott. Thank you, Grandmother. Am I going to ride a horse and be a cowboy? Well, yes, of course you will. Oh, oh, Ben, I'm so sorry. I forgot you were here. Oh, that's all right. You remember my daughter, Etta? Yes, of course. Been a good many years. About seven. Yeah. It's good to see you again, Mr. Cartwright. Very good to see you, Etta. Thank you. Well, this is Scott. Uh, Scott, shake hands with Mr. Cartwright. That's a gun. Yes, indeed. That sure is a gun. Are you a goodie or a baddie, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, I try my best to be a goodie. Me too. Good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's so funny, huh? <laughs> Yeah. 
Here is the water that she's so anxious for, for the dishes, woman. Now get busy rinsing. Sick. I know I promised you a pump for the kitchen sink, and I'll keep my promise. You can't ask no more than that. How it is, Ben, when you make a promise to a woman. This is Scott, your grandson, Papa. I'm going to take a walk down to spring, and when I get back, I don't want you, your bastard, here. Please take Scott outside. You never saw one of them. But I did. Where? My book. I had pictures of lots of animals. What'd the coyote look like? A skinny dog with a pointy nose. Why doesn't Grandfather like me? He should like me. He's my grandfather. Well, your, your grandfather didn't mean to be angry. Why was he then? Well, it's the way people are sometimes. Didn't you ever get angry at someone without knowing why? No. Well, some people do. Just grandfathers? No. Not just grandfathers. You see, lots of times when people seem to be angry at you, they're really angry at themselves. I hope Grandfather stops being angry at himself. I sure would like him to love me. I just wasn't being honest with myself. I convinced myself. All I had to do was walk through that door. And everything would be all right again. Now, everything will be all right. Now, just you wait and see. Your father's upset now, but he'll get over it. Oh, please try not to worry. I can't help worrying, Mama. We can't stay here now, and I'm... I haven't been feeling well lately. Did you see a doctor? What is it? No. Oh, it's nothing, really. Uh, it, it'll be just a little while before I get my strength back. Before I can work again. Don't you even try to work till you're all better. Oh, and don't you worry about a place to stay. My Ben has all the room in the world at his place. No, oh, Mama, I couldn't. Yes, you could, and you will. It'll only be for a few days. Just till your father comes round. All right? All right. Now, come on. That grandson of mine has had enough sadness for one evening. Ben, I wondered if you could do me a big favor and drive Etta and Scott into town. I think it'd be best if they stayed at a hotel for a few days. Oh, nonsense. You have plenty of room at the ranch. And besides, you promised the boy horses, and we got plenty of those, too. That's what I told Etta you'd say, but I wanted her to hear it from you. 
Thank you, Mr. Carver. I'll get the book board here, Captain. Now, you're going to have fun at Mr. Cartwright's. Soon you'll be able to come back and stay here with us. I know. Just as soon as Grandfather stops being angry at himself. That's right. Now, why don't you go and help Mr. Cartwright hitch up that buckboard? Yes, Grandmother. Yes, Grandmother. That sounds so nice. Chickens, that's all there is to it. Hey, Scott, pass me the spud, will you? Yes, sir. Thanks, buddy. Scott, you are now getting a lesson in real Western breakfast eating. How much can you eat, Hoss? Well, um, that depends. On what? Mm, how much time I got. Yeah, well, I hate to ruin that feast of yours, but it's time to go to work, you know? Yeah, Bernie, I hate to see all this good food go to waste. Yeah, hey, we noticed then. Look, nobody's ever been hurt by my eating a lot. What about your horse? <laughs> <laughs> Learning you some of that smart aleck talk from the little brother there, huh? Come on, Joe, let's go to work. Let's see it. Have a good day. Bye. Oh, uh, Jamie, speaking of work, that pack room is waiting for you. I expect it'll be clean as a whistle. Well, I was kind of hoping Scott and I could go fishing this morning. Uh -huh. well, what about the pack room? Well, yeah. Well, we could get home real early and get it done quick. Yeah, Mr. Carwright, with two of us working, we could get it done twice as fast and... And fishing's always better in the morning. All right. Off you go, both of you. Thanks, Mr. Carwright. Thank you. Hey, hey, how about a kiss goodbye, young man? Hey, those two struck up quite a friendship for just a couple of days. No, oh, they have. <laughs> Scott's having such a wonderful time. He's a fine boy. Yes, he is. He looks so much like his father. Did his father ever... That's a, a, a difficult topic to get into, isn't it, Mr. Cartwright? I, I sure wasn't trying to pry. I know that. <laughs> his, uh, his father doesn't even know he exists. Along with everyone else in Virginia City, he just, uh... Well, he thought I went away to St. Louis to live. Why didn't you ever tell? It wouldn't have done any good. He was already married. Uh, I suppose I... I could have told my parents. If I could have lied about it, I said it was a mistake or an accident. But it wasn't. I wanted that baby. I loved him so much. And I knew I could never have him. But I could have his baby. A part of him that I could love for the rest of my life. 
Can you understand why I wanted Scott? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not asking you to say that it was right. Because I, I suppose I know that it wasn't. But can you understand why? Hold this pole nice and still, all right? And I pull back if the float goes down. That's right. How hard? Oh, just middling. Can you eat the fish you catch? You bet you can, and they're good, too. Sure hope we catch some. Don't you worry, we will. Ooh, that feels good. That feels good. Jamie? Yeah? What's a bastard? Um, I think that's a kid that doesn't have a father. Why? That's what my grandfather said I was. Oh. Well, I... That's not too nice to call somebody a... Whatchamacallit. Oh, he didn't mean it. He was just angry at himself. Oh. Jamie? Mm-hmm. Where's your pa? My pa died some time back. Mm. So you don't have a father either. That's right. <sighs> I guess we're both what you call it. Coffee? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Zach just had some cold stew for lunch. You're welcome to some. Oh, no, no, thank you. I had a bite in town. Coffee would be just fine. Zach? How are you? There. Midden. Thank you. Thought I'd stop by and see if you'd join us for supper. We won't. How long are you going to go on this way? Ben, you saw fit to give that girl a room. That's your business. What I do and how I feel is my business. She's your daughter. Not anymore. Not anymore, she ain't. Not for the last seven years. When she went away to have her... She only come back because she needed money and wanted a roof over her head. <laughs> I am not going to talk about it anymore. I think we're going to have to talk about it, though. If she had anything to say, she'd have said it seven years ago, but she didn't. Would you have listened then? Would you listen now? Ben, don't you get so high and mighty with me. It's no skin off your back. She's not your daughter. I loved that girl once. How did she repay me? I didn't know we had to be paid for loving our children. I deserve more than just a note on the kitchen table. That's all there was, just a note saying she's moving east and that she would write. You think that's what she wanted to do? Go off to some strange city and have a baby? Yes because she was afraid to face me with her sin. Well, that's the first honest thing you've had to say, Zach. She was afraid to face you. The one person she should have been able to come to and she couldn't. Because she sinned. Because she made a mistake. 
Even God doesn't expect us to be perfect. What right do you have to expect it? What right did you have to judge me? Zack, please, just see Etta, just talk to her. No, go on home, Ben. Get out. I don't want her name mentioned in this house again. Nice hot coffee, Miss Elanthor. Mr. Horse going be sorry he missed supper. That is the best fish hopsing cook in long time. <laughs> I got the biggest one. I forget this one. Scott, put those bones down. Oh, uh, couldn't I save him? He was the biggest one. No, you can't save them. Now you go yes. on and get ready for bed. You've had a big day. Yes, sir. Sure wish I could have saved him. He had his head in everything. Excuse me, I'll go and make sure he washes behind his ears. Thanks, Jamie. You're, uh, you're awfully quiet tonight, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, sorry. You went to see my father today, didn't you? tears and your father's a very stubborn man he always was how was mama and she tried to talk to him but it's no use so i'd uh i'd like to borrow the buckboard tomorrow if i could i'd be glad to drive you no, no, you've got your work to do. I, uh, I just want to drive into town, do some shopping. Are you feeling well enough to? Yes. Yes, I'm feeling much better, really. Ah, uh, I think I better go tuck Scott into bed. love it here when I was a little girl. Do you remember? You don't have to talk to me, Papa. I just want you to listen. I know how you feel about me. I'm not here to try to change that. It's the boy. He needs family. He needs you and Mama. He's a good boy. Don't blame him for what you think I did, Papa. Are you listening? I hear you. Would you take care of the boy? I'll not have you living under my roof. <laughs> I didn't mean me, Papa. Just my son. You'd give away your own son? Why? I told you. He needs family. You mean he needs a father? You should have thought of that eight years ago. 
Let's don't start that now, Papa. Will you take care of my son? If I take him, will you promise that you'll never see him again? I promise. Swear it. Swear it, you go away and never come back. I swear to you on my life. Would you leave him a note on the kitchen table, too? No. No, no more notes. It's done, then. Papa? Love him. by a spring. When I woke up, it was dark. Oh, well, I'll get you some hot soup, huh? No, no, I'm not hungry. We well, have to have something hot. How about some hot tea? No. Huh? You know what I would really love? What? A glass of brandy. Brandy, all right. To celebrate. Oh? Well, what are we celebrating? I went to see Papa today. And everything's all right. Really? Yeah. And just like that? What did he say? Oh, uh, well, I, I don't remember exactly. Just that he loves Scott. And, uh, well, everything's all right again. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's... <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Yes. That's what the way he was talking the other day. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Well, we really have something to celebrate. I'm very happy for you. Thank you. Mm, that's good news. I'm going to miss it here, Mr. Cartwright. It's been so wonderful. Well, don't talk as if we're not going to see you again. You're just going to be down the road. We're going to be neighbors. And I expect to see you here at least once a week. How are we going to have a fish dinner without Scott? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but, uh, we will be leaving in a couple of days. I, uh, I have to go back to St. Louis for a little while. Um, just a, a few loose ends to take care of. Scott will be fine with my folks. Of course he will be. How long will you be? Not long. Oh, you better go up and see that young man of yours. He was a little worried about you. He said he wasn't going to fall asleep until you went in and kissed him goodnight. I better go up there then. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you something. That boy's going to be real happy when he finds out about his grandfather, isn't he? Thank you. 
think. When we run in the woods, we'll do all the things you like to do. We'll use up every last moment together. Good sailor. It looks like we're gonna see some rain. Let's get back to that old shack we passed. But what about my boat? We'll get it when the rain stops. Come on. Last one of the shack is a rotten apple. yourself. I get coffee. Don't talk to me. You're the one that hired him, you know. I see I hired him, but I tell you that. to come back until the rain stops. Zach, it's Edda. She's very sick. Uh, so she's sick, huh? 
What is it, Ben? I'll tell you what it is. She's trying to get around me, trying to make me feel sorry for her. Zach? She said that she'd leave the boy with us so he could be raised proper. She'd go away and stay. Now she's pretending she's sick, so we'll take her in and let her stay. Well, she won't. She promised she'd go away, and this is one promise she's going to keep. You can tell her that for me. <laughs> Keep a promise, Zack. She's dying. Mom's gonna die, isn't she, Jamie? What's it like in heaven? I don't know exactly. It must be the prettiest place there ever was, though. Are people happy there? Sure they are. Happier than they've ever been. Did you cry when your pa died? Yeah. Yeah, I cried a lot. If you knew your pa was going to be happier than ever, why'd you cry? I loved them, and, and I never wanted him to leave me. I always wanted him to be with me. I guess I was really crying more for me than it was for my pa. You know what I mean? Kinda. It's hard not to cry for his little son Telling me you're so sick. 
I was afraid too, Papa. I didn't want you to take my son. Because you had to. Because you had to? What kind of talk is that? He's my grandson, isn't he? Ha, ha, ha.